Okay, um, so what happens after surgery? So the patient has underwent a good surgery and the patient has recovered, then the patient will see uh, the oncologist together with the surgeon and decide the next plan of action. The next plan of action depends on the stage. If you are talking about stage 1, 2 and 3, then the uh, next course of action is to give further additional treatment, if it warrants, uh, to reduce the risk of cancer relapse don't want it to relapse because once it relapses the tendency for it to relapse becomes more and more frequent the tendency for it to go into stage 4 is, is, is more uh, higher in, in stage 1 often if patient uh, is found to have a stage 1 colon cancer then after surgery normally patient would not need any further treatment so no chemotherapy or no radiotherapy would be required in stage 1 colon cancer if it is a stage 2 colon cancer, we tend to divide it into stage 2 low risk or stage 2 high risk. There are certain features that we look at, uh, for example, if the patient presents with any uh, bowel obstruction uh, prior to surgery or patient has uh, some high risk features from the, uh, the surgical nodes or from the histopathology nodes, then we tend to give chemotherapy after the surgery and the chemotherapy can be uh, a short one a three months course uh, or can be uh, a long one a six months course and there are often options of uh, oral chemotherapy as well so chemotherapy does not necessarily mean that you have to go for uh, injection or intravenous uh, procedures so in stage 2 colon cancer, some patients may need chemotherapy in terms of oral chemotherapy only. Some patients in low risk uh, stage 2 cancers, they do not need any further chemotherapy at all. In stage 3 colon cancers, then we take things more closely, we monitor the patients more closely because the higher the stage, the higher the risk of it getting into stage 4. So in stage 3, often patients would need to go for injection chemotherapy. There are a few ways of giving it and uh, two ways, two main ways. One is once every three weeks for eight cycles. The other one is once every fortnight uh, for 12 cycles. The reason that we give chemotherapy in this uh, stage uh, two or stage three is to reduce the risk of the cancer relapse. How about in stage four? So in stage four, ball game is, is, is slightly different. Uh, the stage, managing a stage four itself is a large topic to cover which means that if the tumour is there and there's a small tumour that has spread to the liver, then we still go all out to, to cure the patient and, and as much as possible. So patient may need to go for resection of tumour in the liver to try to not live with the cancer at all. Uh, if the tumour has disseminated, then the role of surgery is to relieve the obstruction if there is, give us the information in terms of the biopsy and what sort of tumour that we are dealing with. And in stage 4 colorectal cancer, we understand that there are drivers uh, of growth, of, of, of tumour growth. Some genetic mutations will drive the tumour to grow. So we have to do all this uh, genetic, uh, this, this mutational test to see whether there are any actionable mutation. Uh, what I mean to say is uh, if we tend to know the tumour better, then we can have a heads up over the tumour better, we can control the tumour better. As we know in stage 4, the main aim is disease control. We want to control the disease as much as possible. If we could cure, it would be a bonus. Then uh, patients tend to treat it. Stage 4 colon cancer is just like a chronic illness. It's just like when diabetes, you live with it and uh, then aiming for cure. So in stage 4 colon cancers, patients would need to go for chemotherapy. And chemotherapy has been proven to prolong the life expectancy of the patient. So by, by giving chemotherapy, it improves their quality of life. It makes patients better. They can start eating better. Often in stage 4 patients, they, they lose their appetite, they become very skinny and, and, and don't have good quality of life. So by giving chemotherapy, it may improve their quality of life, they may start gaining weight, they may have uh, uh, better times with their loved ones. And with regards to, you can imagine that you are relying on the chemotherapy to extend your life. How much chemotherapy can we give? We can continuously give the chemotherapy to patient as long as it is indicated and as long as the patient is fit for chemotherapy. If the patient is unfit, for example, 
a bed bound and so on giving chemotherapy a must uh, not we don't tend to give chemotherapy in, in unfit patients so we are very pragmatic about that when when we talk about chemotherapy it prolongs life but there are also additional drugs that we can give called targeted therapy uh, this targeted therapy uh, it serves further as an adjunct to the chemotherapy where giving it together in chemotherapy in stage 4 colorectal cancer patients uh, would improve survival we to say that data has shown that patients tend to live longer and longer if they have this chemotherapy together with this targeted therapy and uh, that is to extend the survival and what sorts of targeted therapy that we tend to give it depends on what sort of genetic mutation that the patient has if the patient has a mutation uh, let's name it as KRAS mutation uh, if it is positive then the, the, the medication is A, if the KRAS mutation is negative, then the medication is B. So it's a lot of consideration that we tend to give in stage 4 uh, colorectal cancer patients to see what is the optimal option. If it is a stage 4 rectal cancer uh, patient, not colon cancer, but rectal cancer patient, then uh, depends on the symptoms, patient may be given radiotherapy as well.